Duke Energy has a goal to achieve net zero in carbon emissions by 2050 for electricity generation and net zero in methane emissions by 2030. This is an exciting time for our business and our industry. Today, I'm joined by Swati Daji, our Senior Vice President for Enterprise Strategy and Planning here in our Renewable Resources Control Center. We're here to talk about Duke Energy's plans for achieving these ambitious new goals and the role of innovation, the role of our customer, the role of community. It's an exciting conversation and I'm eager to dive in. Swati, we have been on our decarbonization journey for over a decade and a half. Can you talk to me about some of the great progress we've made, some highlights of our success? So you know we have set our targets to 50% by 2030. We've already achieved 44% uh, as of last year. Um, we have retired 56 coal units. We still have 26 more to go, but we are getting there. Just a little bit around 5% of our generation by 2030 will be from coal, even if there are any units running. So I'm really proud of the progress we have made and the plans we have to exit coal. Uh, this February, as you know, uh, we announced our uh, exit strategy from coal by 2035. And some of the things we were thoughtful about is we want some technologies to develop as we you know, thoughtfully exit coal uh, to make sure that we are doing the right thing. The other proud moment we can have is we achieved 10,000 megawatts of renewable in our portfolio. We own, operate, or procure for our customers that much amount of solar and wind. And we have plans and we see the line of sight to doubling and proudly perhaps tripling that by end of this decade. Yeah, it's such an exciting time to be in the energy sector, so much innovation, so much transformation to come. In your role as enterprise strategy and planning, I mean, you're really at the forefront of that clean energy transition. Talk to me a little bit about the path forward and how we're going to achieve these ambitions. It's not just about us doing it by ourselves and we know exactly how to do what to do. We are engaging with customers. I think we'll be stronger in our journey if we do it together. We know we are experts in our field, but we are also deep listeners to say, what else is out there that could challenge us to do things innovatively? We have a history of doing things for almost 100 years. Yeah. And sometimes you can get too married to that. Mm -hmm. But we have realized that there are thought processes that we need to challenge ourselves in terms of creativity and innovation. And not only just uh, technology, yeah. but also planning yeah. and operations. In everything we do, we could think about it doing it differently to really make it sustainable and affordable for our customers. One uh, thing that I've really admired about you and really enjoy about working with you is, is your mindset, which is very much open to the world of the possibility. How do we, how do we get from A to Z um, as seamlessly as possible? And so if you could talk to me a little bit about kind of the culture, the tone at the top that you're really trying to establish at this company and how you're thinking about that mindset. I feel like each one of us at the top are change agents. Yeah. And I think if we bring outside in view into everything we do, I think we do that well. The other thing that I always challenge me, my team, my peers, and anybody who works with me is never to get complacent or too set in the ways we do things. Yeah. Every position I've taken, I always say, hmm, could this be done differently? Yes. Mm. I think always thinking about maybe there is a better way. Have I really explored that? And I think that goes to the culture at Duke Energy. I see yeah. that more and more, and I'm super excited about that. And I think that's the reason we are making such tremendous progress yeah. at Duke Energy. Yeah. You're really asking the question, what would have to be true to achieve something really transformative, which is so empowering and so amazing? Yeah, and you had the word transformation. I think it's not about incremental change. Yeah. I think when you think about the change, you could say, what if these basic elements that I so am grounded in, what if they yeah. are not true? Yeah. Suddenly, you really, really start thinking more expansively Yeah. and really change the way you think about solutions. Uh, right before this position, I was in customer solutions, and that's what it took to say, how do you think about how we serve our customer, still reliably, still affordably, mm. but how do, can we still do that, but differently, yeah. and maybe better. You know, we think about competition. Yeah. I don't think about competition. I think about 
competition being somebody either I can partner with or perhaps I can do better than they can do. So competition yeah. can be seen in two ways, right? Yeah. Um, so it's not something to fear, no. but it's something to conquer. I like to think I'm a competitor. And so when I see someone out there doing something that's interesting, that's provocative, I pay attention. It kind of empowers me to be, I don't know, even more engaged in the issue because I think I, I, can, I can do that better. Again, it's, I think it's all about earning the right to serve our customer, never Absolutely. to take that for granted because Absolutely. they will have choices, perhaps not today, but tomorrow they might. Yeah. I want to make sure no matter what the rules of the roads are, if they can continue to think, Duke Energy is my best option. Absolutely. If we can integrate everything they want through us, I think we become that go-to trusted advisor for our customers. Absolutely. That's, I think, a winning solution, no matter what the future might be. The future might be regulated, deregulated, and any flavors in between. Yeah. yeah. I think that thinking of everything we do as a earning a right to serve yeah. our customer. And that's why the reliability, affordability is just as important as innovation and creativity and decarbonization.